And we're live. Um, hello, welcome everyone to today's uh, Reinventing the Tattoo Drawing Group. Um, I'm going to, let's see. My name is Jason Leeser. Um, I'll be leading today's group. Uh, Gabe is here floating around somewhere in the background. Um, so welcome, Gabe. Uh, just wanted to give a uh, shout out to our sponsors for allowing us to do this and for, you know, basically helping us so that we can get everything started and, you know, we can continue to do this on a regular basis. Um, so that is inkjet stencils. I don't know if you guys have ever used inkjet stencils, but it's a game changer. It really is. Um, I mean, you want to talk about being able to print off a photo and stencil that on someone. Pretty cool. Uh, Loose Screw Tattoo, um, absolutely phenomenal artists. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. Absolutely great environment, beautiful studio, phenomenal artists. And Raw Pigments, um, currently I'm actually using some of those in some of my tattoos. Excellent consistency. Their pigment load is awesome and they just, it, it melts in like butter. It's good stuff. Give it a shot. Uh, I'm here with uh, Ricardo again. Thank you, Ricardo, for joining us. Um, yeah. I'm currently <laughs> pinned. And um, before we really get into this, uh, I wanted to give a big thank you to Gabe and Guy Aitchison for allowing me to host these Sunday afternoon drawing sessions. Really appreciate it. Um, always love getting on here and talking with different people from all over. And uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for giving me the opportunity to do this. Oh, no, no worries. Thank you for, for hosting. Um, I, did, did you get to let everyone know that if they were interested in joining, then they can get over to the uh, to the event to find the Zoom? Ah, good point. Good point. Ah, if you have okay. the uh, reinventing app or are part of the community, please, by all means, the more the merrier. Um, go to the reinventing the tattoo community. Jump on the Zoom link. It should be posted in the events section in the community, uh, we'd love to have you on here. You know, anything that you might wanna bring up or maybe you wanted to go through and have us critique something. Uh, maybe you just wanted to bounce some ideas off of us for something, by all means. Um, I mean, granted, I'm, I'm kind of speaking for you here, Ricardo too. So sorry about that. But no, by man. all means, join us, click on the Zoom link and um, you know, jump in here with us. We'd be more than happy to have a discussion with you about just about anything. Um, you know, obviously awesome. there are certain things like politics that we don't discuss, but nah. you know, anything right. tattoo related, bring it up. Unless on. you're correct, I mean. <laughs> um, hey, the other thing that uh, we want to mention is that uh, we want to thank uh, uh, Jason uh, you know, for hosting. There is a, uh, a coupon code for the Reinventing the Tattoo Canon. So uh, if you go to reinventingthetattoo.com slash next level, uh, uh, you'll hit up uh, Jason's uh, coupon code there so that we'll know that you were listening to his show. And, uh, and then, yeah, you get 10% off of the can and uh, yeah, for life. Which is, which is pretty awesome. Um, I'm actually going to see if I can figure out a way to, to get that up on a splash screen or a lower third real quick. See if I can do that. Um, uh, yeah. If we were slicker, we'd have uh, yeah, you're right. Thank you for, uh, that's why we try to do some of these things because uh, we, we sometimes will think of them, but uh, it, it'd be, it's amazing how much more effective it is when people could actually see the links when we're talking about them. <laughs> I know, right? So if I'm correct, oh, don't want to put it up there with a spelling error. Lord <laughs> knows. Uh, that should do. What are, what are you working on, Ricardo? Well, uh, he's going to fire it up. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of doodling. Um, I was in the middle of uh, moving out of my other place, out of my old place. So I'm just kind of doodling this painting oh. I've had. Uh, just kind of sketching around. I'm going to draw her, I think. I don't oh, know cool. if you can... Yeah. So I'm just in the middle of moving. So I figured I'd go analog today, man, and just kind of play around with some stuff and hang out with you guys for a little while. Awesome. To stuff. I'm back in the land of living. I've been uh, I've been out of commission for the past couple of days. Uh, I got my first vaccine shot, and uh, it totally wiped me out, man. Hey, I thought we were going to avoid politics. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 
No, it was. Uh, it's. I'm pretty psyched. I got my uh, first shot. Next one's uh, May first. Okay. And then um, by mid May, I'm fucking travelable again. So I'm pretty pretty jacked up about that. That's exactly. And I'm not going what... crazy. Just to, for the record, I'm not going crazy licking eyeballs and shit. I'm not <laughs> a very touchy feely person, anyways. I'd, I'd be happy to stay six feet away from anybody, whether I'm vaccinated or not. Just that's right. cool. We can keep our distance. So I'm all down with that shit. Right. Um, but I'll be doing that shit from different some, some different places. <laughs> Right, exactly. That's what I've been looking forward to as well. As you know, I was like getting back in touch with people again and starting to meet some of the friends that I've made on here on the on the forum and stuff like that. So pretty excited about it. Um, but it didn't it didn't do too bad for you though, huh? Uh, you know, uh, my um, for me personally, I mean, yeah, I mean, I do computer stuff online, so it's uh, it, it kind of thrusts people into my world. Uh, and and I'd already spent the last the previous two years, you know, taking my two walks a day and not talking to people. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, and, you know, being able to take two, you know, walks a day, you know, uh, through the woods or through a very uh, sleepy town is amazing. And, you know, I, I really do have nothing to complain about. Um, you know, and obviously we know a lot of friends that are, and in, in, in you guys might be in different situations, you know, uh, where you can't, or people can't, especially, you know, remember like when Mickey was talking about just being in Milan and he's like, I'm in Milan, man. I can't like, it. you know, it's fucking yeah. packed city. And yeah. um, so I've been very lucky, but I'm a, you know, I, so I could keep doing this for another fucking couple of years if need be, but uh, I'd be also happy to, you know, catch up with people for real, not for real, for a uh, person. Hey, Bruno, could you guys uh, turn your cameras sideways? Yeah, guys. Hey Come guys, on. how you are you? This by now. Here we go. Holy shit, that'll be the uh, the gay Ripley supercut. I could I could probably it could probably has like there's probably like an hour and a half of me being like, oh oh, can you turn your camera sideways? Oh, <laughs> sideways? Or, oh, can you turn your camera sideways? Uh, I'm at, uh, Bruno, yeah, Bruno your camera's yours still is not still sideways. Not... Can you shake it? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do that right now. I'm at grandma's house today, kind of improvising a little setup. Uh cool. Right well, on. Looks I'm good, at, however. Let me uh let me go ahead and give that a shot one second. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Oh, let me turn this around. Do you have your screen lock on, maybe, Bruno? So, Bruno, if you uh, swipe, no, are you on an I, iPhone? No. Yeah. yeah. I, I swipe, am on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you swipe down, I think, and you get like the control panel. There's a. There, there you go. One, there you go. That works perfect. Yep. I tapped it and, uh, yep, that's, that's what it needed. A little tap. Yeah, okay. Nice. Happy to get back on, Thanks, on the uh, topic of vaccines. I just got my one shot Johnson and Johnson the other day. Uh huh. Um, one of my very good clients and friends is actually a pharmacist and they gave me a call up. I've been, I was trying to get an appointment for weeks and couldn't find an appointment in my area anywhere. They let me know that, hey, you know, we've got one available. We had an appointment cancellation. If you want in, come and get it. Boom. Uh, there you go. So went over there, got it, you know, felt fine that day. And then I woke up the next morning. This was Thursday morning. I felt it, it, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. But I'm alive, <laughs> you know, and that's the, that's the positive thing. Um, I did grow a third arm, so you may <laughs> want to be aware of that. I chopped it off, though, late last night. I think I still have, like, a little bit of a nub back here, but, you know. I mean, it's cool. It's just one more hand that you can use to stretch out a tattoo with. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I, don't, I don't know, like, uh, I, they've done the research, like, 100% of the people that get the vaccines are going to die. <laughs> really? <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> You know, I heard 100% of people that go to grocery stores are going to die. Right. Exactly. We're yeah. all going to fucking die. No, sorry. Okay, let's bring this back in. <laughs> oh, man, let's yeah. Not, let's try not to scare everyone this early. But, I mean, so, we're all going to die eventually. So, it's a matter of how much fun you have yeah. and how many tattoos can you get in your life before that happens. Mm -hmm. Make some good art and make some good friends. Sit down, have some good conversation. 
I was uh, yeah. talking with Alex DePasse a little bit this morning. They're going to start tattooing in uh, Italy on Monday. Nice. That's, That's gonna good. Be awesome. uh, I forgot, though, that California, I don't think, I think places in Northern California haven't been able to tattoo for 11 months. Whoa. What? Is that the truth? Can somebody fact check that? Is that, is that real? Because I was wild. talking to an artist from California and he was like, yeah, I think we're going to go back to tattooing soon and spend like 11 months. I'm like, holy shit. I think that it's been so long that I forgot that. I'm not sure. Maybe it's not in oh. Southern California. Maybe just Northern California. Maybe uh, I don't. I don't even know. But uh, it seems crazy, horrifying. <laughs> you can't even imagine Let's see if I can that. Pull that up. I know that in Germany they were gonna. They actually opened back up briefly for like a few days, and then they realized that they had to close it back up. And they've been closed for a while. Yeah. For about that same amount of time. Whew. Yeah, that's, that's Florida. Wild. Florida's like wide open, eh? Yeah, Florida's yeah, wide open pretty much. Yeah, there hasn't been that that many restrictions in regards to opening since that first time that they opened up. Well, like, crazy. Who uh, who uh, texted me? Uh, Z- uh, Zimpa. Is that how you pronounce his name? Oh. Zimpa? El chimpa, yeah. Uh huh. In, in Spanish, it's, it's more of a chick, like chimpa. Uh huh. Chimpa. Yeah. Cool dude, man. What, what, what's he up to? Yeah, uh, they're opening up. Him and uh, Darwin are opening up a shop in uh, in Manhattan. It looks like. And, oh wow! Uh, he saw he saw the uh, the art posts for the Spanish uh, art jams. And uh, that's awesome. I let him know to uh, to get a hold of you. He said you were. Yeah. Said, Bruno's a great guy. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna get in touch with him for sure. Awesome. Yeah, he's a Juan super Salgado's cool dude. Be, uh, up next? Yeah, Juan Salgado is going to be uh, on the next one. It's going to be Tuesday, uh, May 11th at 9 p.m. And uh, Gio Coneta is going to be joining us. Uh, Alex Torres. Uh, Juan awesome. Torres. Yeah, so it's it's, it's going to be a fun one for sure. I'm a big fan of... Uh, I mean, I love all their work, but just, uh, you know, really, really... Uh, into Juan Salgado style and you know co- the way he uses color and negative space and yeah oh yeah super cool That's guy right. too he did uh, one of the posters for one of the tattoo gatherings forever ago yep. yeah yeah Stone, maybe he's, he's great he's awesome he's been awesome for a long fucking time too yeah man absolutely so yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be great Oh, it'll yeah, be good to get a, a direct uh, story straight from Puerto Rico, huh? Yeah, and what's funny is that I I'm I'm actually going to Puerto Rico. Uh, it looks like at the end of May, but that's gonna be right after, right after uh-huh. the, the jam. But but who knows? Maybe maybe something can be improvised. Oh yeah, awesome! That'd be amazing. Yeah, man. I, yeah, I did think about PR as a place to go for. Uh, I, ha- I have a plane ticket. And uh, I'm not going to get very far, you know, to begin with. I also will probably just drive. I might just drive in it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get in an airplane again. Just uh, maybe, well, I don't even know. We'll see. No, I will. Awesome. I have to get to Europe. I'll get on an airplane in November. There you go. In October, no? The, the, I don't uh, have to fly the, to October, though. For well, me, that's straight up the street. But <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, the the third to the third to the sixth, the, the Sunday to a Wednesday. Yeah, even I'm like, beautiful. I was like, wow, that's crazy. That's a fucking really odd set of days, but it's all the tattooers' days off, so fuck it. Yeah. Uh, hmm. For what, Jiminy Peak? Yeah. Oof. I yeah, love are, that place. Are tickets on sale for that yet? Uh, nope. There's uh, we're not because we're not really sure what people would be getting for their tickets. The uh, the rooms are moving. Slow, you know, they're not like like gangbusters, but uh, the as far as tickets are concerned, yeah, uh, you know, I, I think that we'll end up probably doing, you know, purchase, uh, you know, seminars as you go kind of a thing. Um, you know, maybe we have a ticket that includes a couple, but like I don't like I'm not like really gearing or aching to like start like spending money you know, like bring headliners, <laughs> you know. So that's why I'm kind of thinking it's like a BYOB. Like, if people want to show up and fucking teach, you know, then we can come up with some ways to like charge people and, you know, webcast tickets and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. 
but like uh as far as you know I, I do think i have a band that uh that i'm gonna book because that that was my uh I, 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 i'm like i want to get a band at least to, to kick off the party right and uh it would be silly to try to go through all this effort for a couple of years and not and frankly i don't care if like three people show up and yeah anyways so so the answer to that is no tickets are not on sale and um <laughs> we we might have like some tickets uh if if we do sell them it, there's probably be like 100 maybe 150 um not very many because you know but again ultimately we don't, we don't even really know what we can do uh, mm -hmm. other than you know put less than 100 people per room in right right now is there going to be like live painting and yes you know, oh jams yes and stuff okay. oh yes yeah yeah. Oh, we'll, yeah we'll have uh we'll have painters we'll have all the sets for all the live shows um you know so we could set up you know if some of the suppliers want to come in with booths you know there's space there's space i have the whole fucking place rented and nice. um uh so yeah so we'll do all the different shows live and a lot of the uh you know a lot of the shows so far said hell yeah we'll be there um awesome you know we'll, we'll see again it's i'm not like you know we're not like signing contracts with anybody or anything um but uh yeah no it's gonna be pretty fun you know and uh like i said what i envision is really yeah painters coming and doing their thing teaching a seminar or two I mean, we might have a, a, a variety of artsy types there, you know, because there's no tattooing, so we might as well as have, you know, all sorts of, you know, uh, creatives out. And, um, yeah, that's why it's like a BYUB, bring your own brain. Fuck it. I was going to say, because I'm, I'm actually probably going to invest in, uh, like, building and bringing, like, a super massive canvas. Oh, cool. You know? And then, like, a whole bunch of brushes and different types yeah, of, like, yeah. acrylic. And then just, you know, I'll start working on something and just kind of seeing what comes out from whoever. Someone wants cool. to jump in and paint with me. They're more than welcome to, um, you know, just nothing planned, just kind of going with the flow and just seeing what evolves. Awesome. Exactly. Yes. That's the spirit. And we'll have a spot for that. Awesome. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a yeah, lot of outdoor know. space, so we'll all be hanging out outdoors a bunch. You know, but there'll be some uh, the the growing network is the other uh, one of the other projects I'm working on. There'll probably be some cannabis growers there because it's full on oh, um, legal and recreational. Oh uh, uh, yeah. You know, maybe bring in some <laughs> brewers. Probably should have some brewers. You know, have Very some chefs. Cool. <laughs> Are we allowed to bring our own magic codes? <laughs> I suppose, well, you know, what you, what people, uh, you know, everyone's got their own hotel or condo to do whatever, you know, is in the context of healthy. Okay. And uh, <laughs> awesome, there's a whole mountain man. there, too. It's basically on the side of a mountain, right? So you could go walk around the mountain if you want to. You should. Everyone should plan on walking around the mountain. <laughs> that sounds like a good time. Man, it's a beautiful They'll place. Be walking man. around the mountain when they come. <laughs> Bruno, did you ever hit the uh, uh, Alpine slide? No, I didn't. I didn't. It's, I didn't. Uh, it's tough because there's always so much shit going on at any given time to, to peel away, to do it is tough, but right. you can't go there again without doing it. It's it's worth it, huh? Yeah. It's fucking 100% fucking yes. Yeah, I'm going to make twice. sure. You should, get, you should get the three tickets. Do, uh, do the uh, Alpine slide, and then you do the Alpine roller coaster, and then you do whichever Ooh. one you enjoyed more. Oh wow, roller coaster! I didn't see that. It's an alpine roller coaster, so it's uh, it's one you strap into, right? So the slide is one that you could fall off of and get oh, like right. a road rash. Uh -huh. And then uh, <laughs> the other one's on a track where you buckle in. So the other one you could you could just go full tilt. You do, I mean, you, no brakes, just full tilt all the way through. You're on a roller coaster ride. Why the fuck would you ever slow down? There's no reason to slow down unless you hit somebody, but. You know they time it right. So so roller coaster, you go full tilt. You can't go flying off. Your seat buckled in. The uh, the alpine slide takes a little bit of finesse to go as fast as you can without fucking yourself up. <laughs> there's some really cool uh, YouTube videos. I wish uh, there's a YouTube video of uh, oh, uh, Derb and Carson uh, going down it. Yeah, oh, I can't imagine. Oh, that's awesome, man. So many. I'll post that up in the uh, in the community. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that sounds like nothing but fun. 
Hell and then yeah. next year, the fo- sorry, just to wrap up, the following year, we'll go full on tattoo gathering there again. So we've got the dates. It's like October. I don't know. It's like 20 to 23 or something. I don't know. I got to probably get it all squared away. But that's when we do full on tattooing and uh, mm-hmm. for the public. I mean, just for the public that wants to go out in the middle of the fight for nowhere. But, right. Uh, yeah, it's and always such a, usually some of the best shows. I was just going to say that. Mm-hmm. Totally, man. Like the vibe is excellent. You know, like the, the type of people that are there. Like with the intent, everybody's got that, you know, similar intention while they're there. It's just a great, great time, man. Yeah, people may not, it may not draw the biggest crowd, but the quality of the crowd that'll be there is going to be way better. Yep. Nope. 100%. Yeah. It's kind of funny. It is pretty self-policing too. Uh, there's, there'll be tattoo shop owners that uh, catch up with me on Friday because uh, it starts on Thursday, and uh, they'll be like, "Oh, we're real sorry about our, you know, our buddy so, from last night." I'm like, "Huh? Oh, I didn't, I didn't notice. I didn't, I didn't hear anything." They're like, "Oh yeah, he got too drunk. He got really obnoxious." And but we put him in a car ride, you know, this morning, so he's on his way home. He won't be a problem again. I'm like, okay, <laughs> so there we go. Yeah. I would like to apologize in advance for Ricardo's behavior. <laughs> uh, well, what I'm saying is you don't need to apologize in advance. People boot your ass. <laughs> You're going to be apologizing from the phone the next day. Well, I, I know. I'm just saying, like, I, I know <laughs> Ricardo, when he has one or two Zimas, can get a little out of hand. <laughs> it's, it's always just, a Zima, dude. It's always it's a Zima. Hard, it's hard I know to control. I'm dating myself whenever I say that, right? It, it's not really the Zima. It's more the Jolly Rancher inside the Zima that gets me going. Ah, no, you're very, very correct there. It's the sugar. Yeah, man, it's always the quiet ones. You got to watch out. No, uh, it'd be fun, man. It's like attending something like that where everybody just hangs out and talks art and stuff, dude. And, you know, it's always a good vibe. It's always a good place to kind of uh, see what see what's happening, learn some new things and like kind of pick up on people's methods and stuff, man. It's always fun to see that, especially in person. And it'll be fun to uh, get, once again meet everybody in person again too. Some art fusion projects, you know, going That's on. That's what I'm trying to get into, man. Like a big, yeah. big old art fusion painting. Yeah, man. That's Maybe the dream I'll just right there. For like a whole roll of like pre gessoed canvas, and we'll just set that up against a wall. I have some. I have a big thing of like raw canvas, man. I can bring it with me. All you gotta do is, is it, just. Well, is it just, raw or gessoed? Well, you can, it's, it's raw, but I mean, it wouldn't be hard to gesso it. Um, like with just some big, like four inch brushes, you know what I mean? Just slop it on there, dude. Yeah. And, I was thinking um, about just springing for like a roll of like already gessoed. That way we wouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah. That's, that's true. I mean, we could, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could gesso it too beforehand and just, I think then again, up, if we got up there a day early, that wouldn't really be an issue at all. No. Just could get up there a day early, get set up, gesso it, get everything prepped and ready to go. I'm done. Just staple it to like some wood. Right. Then auction it off for charity once it's done. That'd be fun. You'd have to do something good then so people buy it. Ooh. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hello. Lauren, yay. Uh, hey, Just Lauren. Was just... by. Hey, Gabe. Uh, it's hey, Lauren. Lauren. Hi, Bruno. It's been a busy week this week. What's up, dude? What's up, Ricardo? Nice, Bruno. That's cool. Thank you. It's going. Yeah, the thing is incredible. Yeah. Dude, I don't like Thanks, you man. anymore, Bruno. <laughs> oh, stop it, silly. <laughs> don't be so silly. I like that. Um, yeah, like... That contrast you got going over there, Jason. Oh, dude, I, I barely even worked on this thing. Like this is this is just like me messing around right now. I really do like the way that my octopus came out from last week. So Oh hell yeah. Hopefully I've got enough time to do that, although I've got like a laundry list of stuff I gotta get done today later on. So including laundry. Hmm. Actually, yes. Today is laundry day. The whites. No, that, that, uh, you just throw everything in there, man. It, it, that, that's irrelevant. I, I, I do the same thing. Yeah, I don't really have a lot of white stuff anyway. Chuck it all in there. 
Yeah, we're tattooers. Most of our clothes are black. Yeah. Part of the uniform, right? Well, I mean, yeah. Black t-shirt, black jeans, black Black hats, black socks. (laughs) Black soul. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's good. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) The only thing we don't have that's not black is our smiles. But even then, that's questionable. (laughs) Sometimes they're more gray. That piece is, uh, How long have you been working on that, Bruno? Ricardo. Um, I started this uh, yesterday around like 7 and worked on it last night. And uh, yeah, just uh, jumped back on it a little bit ago and going to work on it for the rest of the day. Sweet. What about you, Ricardo? Know. Uh, well, I'm just kind of doodling right now, um, drawing this painting that I'm looking at. Um, I left my iPad at my, my house and right now I'm like in between places. So I'm, uh, just kind of using what I got right now. I just wanted to come and hang out and talk to everybody, see what's going on. Sweet. Yeah. What about you? You got anything going on? Uh, not too much today. I've been, um, just working on, you know, label stuff, stuff like that. Mm-hmm that this week i uh i was telling sandy and maybe i mentioned it to you but um i joined this afdo recently which is the association of food and drug officials and um, i'm about to release some new labels so i actually got a 25 page compliance guide on thursday night and on friday morning i was about to submit them for printing okay (laughs) so just kind of nitpicking that because it's a it's pretty um in-depth sort of like guide i guess which is awesome nice makes my brain so no art for me today (laughs) i actually do it lays it out black and white yeah i mean it's uh for something like this yeah it tells you you know your font size should be one sixteenth of an inch if it's here and it should be located here and this needs to be written there so what yeah it's it's extremely thorough wow it's very thorough jeffrey that's incredible (laughs) yeah so I guess it was a stroke of luck for that timing. Wow. But that's enough to make me jump out of my chair and push away from the desk. You know what I mean? Just doesn't, scream. Doesn't that just sound so exciting, Ricardo? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh I can God. literally, I, I'm barely sitting in my chair right now. That's how excited I am about that compliance. <laughs> <laughs> I actually felt I the same, hear, you guys. I can hear the enthusiasm <laughs> in my voice. No, really, this is me excited. That's awesome, Jason. <laughs> wow. If you're like an, a cake with many layers. <laughs> you can hear the enthusiasm. It should be extremely apparent by now. Tasty cake. I was, I was actually looking at one of your drawings with a snake maybe a couple hours ago, Jason. Oh, uh, yeah? I think it was one of the original posters we had made. Very cool uh, to see, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, a lot of those, like, I, I just sit down and I just, like, start drawing, and it usually ends up turning into a snake and a flower of some type. Radical. Yeah. What this Do you have, like, actually, a, are you, uh, do you like snakes a lot? I do. I love to draw them. Um, I love their motion. I love their perspective, um, their intricacy, mm-hmm. how you can make them look any way you want, you know, whether it's peaceful and kind of subdued. You can make them look a bit more elegant. You can make them look very ferocious and very graphic, very sharp. Um, you can make them look any way or portray any emotion you want. Uh, lately, I've been trying to get more into the very kind of peaceful, elegant kind of serpents as opposed to the I'm angry and going to bite you kind of serpent. So, um this is a like an initial draft concept for hopefully if the person ever gets back to me um a rather large three foot by six foot painting oh wow i'll be doing so uh we'll see you know if that comes to fruition but you know we'll see so i'm gonna get it mocked up worst case scenario i'll i'll do a, a small little watercolor draft of it maybe 10 by 20 or, uh, you know, eight by 16, something small that I can just do a quick color study with. 
Okay. Um, and, and just see how it turns out, you know? Um, I was playing around with several different concepts for this painting. This is just one of them. The other one I was considering was doing almost like an Art Nouveau kind of uh, panel. Um, yeah. Also same, and going to end up being the same size, just, you know, couldn't figure out, you know, do I want to do a flower in the middle? Do I want to do a rose? Do I want to do a bud, a peony? Do I want to do a mum? Because lately I've been doing a lot of chrysanthemums. Um, you know, but I wanted to give it almost like an Art Nouveau kind of feel. Mm -hmm. So. That's awesome. Nailing it. Yeah. It looks great, dude. That snake, that's the composition in that snake, the first one you showed, it's pretty incredible, man. It's like, a, that's got a lot of nice flow and a lot of nice dynamic to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I always like to to incorporate different levels and different positioning whenever I draw a snake. So I always try to have foreground, middle ground, and background all in that serpent's composition to show different levels and layers of depth as it moves back and forth in space. Right. So, you know, <clears throat> focusing on the head area as, you know, my primary, you know, uh, my primary foreground, right? Moving into, well, let's make this a little bit bigger and we'll change the color. That'll make things a bit easier to see. So if I have this as my primary foreground and I'm moving into my middle ground, this from the middle ground is moving back down into a, a second layer of background or middle ground, then coming back forward again, back into the middle ground, moving back slightly more back into the background, back into the middle ground, and then back into the foreground. Yeah. So it's really moving in and out of space as much as it possibly can. Mm -hmm. Well, and then the, you get the direction of the scales and stuff and the, like the, the belly that kind of helps that, that linear motion that you're talking about. That helps create that depth too. It's pretty, pretty nice, man. It's a nice piece. Yeah, it helps move your eye around. My, the thing that I'm really running into with, uh, with this composition and with my uh, initial thought was, initial concept was have maybe like a flower here, whether it's a chrysanthemum or a peony or a rose. I always like to mix flowers in with snakes. It just kind of softens the appearance a little bit. It mm -hmm. doesn't make it quite as harsh or quite as aggressive. Uh, gives it a little bit more of a, a soft feel, you know, mm -hmm. but by doing this and splitting this up like this, obviously some of this background body is going to be obscured, but then how do I want to try to move my focus back up to where I want people to look, right? Yeah. How do I, how do I want to redirect their attention back to that primary focus? So I, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I think on your concern about it too, I think if you were to do the chrysanthemum, it, it'd be nice to see those because those petals, like they're so long and they kind of fold over towards the end of them, right? Right. It'd be kind of nice where you have that circle around the head. It'd almost be nice to see somewhat of a bulb offset away from the head, the bulb of it. And then those petals kind of falling down towards the same flow of the snake where it goes in the direction towards the head. You know what I mean? And then kind of curving over and then around like <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to describe without being able to point it out. Um, I, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Well, my, so with this, what I was originally trying to, to do, it, it's just something I find myself being drawn to a lot more lately is um, metallic accents and paintings. So like okay. having one, one thing that's accented with like a metallic gold or like a sun disc or um, you know, maybe like a silver halo around something, just something to like catch the light a little bit more. Um, and mm -hmm. that's kind of what I have this light blue, um, this gotcha. light blue kind of circle behind the head. So where this is would be more or less filled in metallic gold. Gotcha. Yeah. Then that wouldn't make sense. Push to put there. Back a little bit further. Yeah. But how do I want to, to bring the eye back up and around? 
And it's almost like you take that the frame that you had with the rose and kind of incorporate it with the snake, if that's the case. And then you could have parts of the uh, the uh, border of that that nouveau kind of framework, kind of peeking up and over parts of the snake even, and that would help establish some of that depth. <clears throat> Especially that belly area right there below below the head to the left of the head. I really love how that like uh, that addition like separates the the snake and makes it like the main thing that you want to look at. Mm-hmm. Right. And and I'm sure that from there, that's probably gonna be the main thing. And then from there it's gonna like your your when you're looking at it, it's gonna go from there to the flower, I'm sure. And then the body of the snake will just be this pleasant flow you know that stays behind where is this uh, piece going for going uh, it's a draft for a painting oh for a painting man it's fucking dope yeah it's killer yeah it's one of uh one of three or four that i'm trying to get off the ground but i love how immediately as soon as you did that like circle that aura type thing you know yeah. right back in the head it just immediately uh you know, uh, gave that head, like it separated it from everything and just looked real nice. Yeah, just, but what is the, um, me- the metallic finish that you're talking about? So it's literally like a gold acrylic paint. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, so I, I like the Dr. PH Martin Spectralite um, metallic gold. And what that does is as that dries, it dries to a flat tone. So it's not like, you know, it's going to be too clumpy in any areas. It's not going to, nice. it's not going to be, you know, weird in that aspect. Um, and I, I've used it on certain paintings before. And when you lay it down, it just looks like this nice kind of like dingy kind of like kind of yellowish gray tone. But the second the light hits it, it, it just sets it off and you see this metallic reflection and it's, absolutely amazing just the effect that that one spot of metallic gold really has nice so and this is another one i've kind of been struggling with i've got a couple of smaller oval frames that i found in storage and uh, you know once again snake and mom just because i i don't know i just always draw snakes it's just something i draw a lot but um you know just trying to once again figure out foreground and background how to move the eye around i might even not do the snake i might just stick with the chrysanthemum and just leave it leave it be you know maybe throw a um a little leaf in the background or something to kind of take up the rest of the negative space yeah yeah or a or a moth a small little moth kind of flying in there. Don't really know if I have too much room for a moth. It depends on the size. Like if you were to play with the, uh, you know, the scale of the moth, it would make the flower seem even bigger. But yeah, you might be right. But you you definitely would like cover up some of those other petals, unless it was kind of coming out and over part of the frame. But you're saying that the the canvas itself is oval, though, right? Yeah. You so this so much is room. Um, what I'm looking at now. So this is the rabbit on the frame, which is like that right. little ledge that holds the mm. glass on, yeah. you know, in between where you put the picture in, in the back and then where the glass is being held on. So mm-hmm. from what I understand, that's called the rabbit. Don't ask me why it's called that, but apparently that's <laughs> what it's called. Right. Um, and it's, it? it's actually huge. It's like three eighths of an inch wide. That's pretty ridiculously big for you know just a tiny little ledge so i i got all that figured out and got everything sized out so it's one-to-one scale obviously like you can pinch and zoom and in procreate so it's not one-to-one scale on the screen but it is in the drawing so if i were to print this out transfer this to watercolor paper and paint it you know i could do that very very easily um you know but it's just sitting down i think one thing that i really struggle the most it's one of the reasons why i love doing these sunday afternoon drawing groups is because i get to to talk through certain problems i'm having and Mm -hmm. by doing that 
it helps me realize things that I myself am actually trying to troubleshoot and work on um, while, you know, I'm, I'm discussing what I'm going through with this and how things are looking and what I'm struggling with. And I think one thing I always end up struggling with is just composition and how to move your eye around a whole piece so that you see the whole thing, right? But you always end up staring back at what I originally want people to focus on. Right. Yeah, that's when it starts to get real tricky, man, when you're intentionally trying to set that goal for yourself, you know, which is like, I want the viewer to see this more than anything else. This is what I want them to pay attention to. And a lot of times, you know, when you're just doodling and stuff like that, sometimes it just kind of happens, which is crazy, right? But to sit down with that intent, it, it can get kind of difficult sometimes, you know, for sure. And I can see what you're saying about, you know, kind of talking out loud, speaking out loud and having a, like a, a sounding board, you know, yeah. uh, and it can kind of answer your question for you. And you're like, ah, oh, I already knew that. What the hell? <laughs> That's cool. Jason, and yeah. do you think that, uh, like, for example, using, like, starting the composition from the start, I mean, you may have already done it this way, but uh, this is something that I just recently kind of uh, was shown, right? Like, from the start, you can start with a, 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 a line of composition that, that kind of, like, already tells you where, the <clears throat> like if you kind of follow that line of composition and and you place the main elements accordingly then it's almost like not automatic but like you have a very high chance of of getting that result where like the eye goes exactly where you want it to go right right so i do do that quite often and usually what i do is i'll lay down the um the golden ratio Ah, and mm -hmm. I'll lay that right over top of whatever it is I'm working on. Uh, in fact, I actually have a whole brush set of. And you know where, you know what? It's actually in essentials. Here's the problem that I usually run into. Mm -hmm. Is if I lay this down. because I'm working in an oval frame, a lot of my visual map, if you will, ends up getting cut off unless I shrink it way down. But as you can see, like I already have part of that arc coming up. I see over. it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was just, I think mostly what I'm trying to work on now is just figuring out what do I really want to put in this area, right? Because that's gonna be, visually speaking, that's gonna be like my primary focal point, mm -hmm. right? If I want something to be truly visually interesting, that's where I'm gonna wanna put something very important. Uh -huh. You know, and figuring out what that is, is gonna be the challenge. Well, I think that sometimes that's, and I, I, I agree with you, like it's the main focal point, like it's, it's just naturally drawing your eye towards that center, right? But I think um, that's kind of when it comes into play with what's the relation and the subject matter, you know, like I right. think sometimes that helps out quite a bit. And it's, that's what I was thinking of like some of the elements that you could add to it, that moss would be pretty cool or like other elements that come around with the, with the flower, like you said, the leaf would be perfect, especially if you're just trying to do it in that oval shape, that leaf would be ideal there, I think because that's going to draw your, but you'd have to put a lot more detail into that leaf or something, though, wouldn't you? Especially if you want, well, not necessarily. I well, guess it could be kind of out of focus, too. Exactly. The leaf would end up being out of focus because that would automatically be pushed into the background instead of the middle yes. ground or the foreground. Yeah, and it still gives you that balance, right? Right. There you go, bro. Man, that's awesome. I like the idea. I keep on envisioning this, like, lit up little bug, you know, when you say moth. Yeah. I see this yeah. like little bug, you know, with yeah. <laughs> ra radiating some kind of a, you know, bright color, uh, just kind of flying over the beautiful core mm -hmm. of the flower, something like that. Yeah. Just to share my, my vision as I was looking at that cir orange circle right there. 
Like yeah, a- that bug would turn into the the main uh, protagonist of the piece. He yeah. would be in that spot. Yeah, if I mm-hmm. was going to throw a moth in, I would probably throw the moth somewhere in this general area. Mm-hmm. In the foreground, pretty much cut off. A big portion of that, yeah. You know, to to make it and give it a little bit more of like a, a lifelike proportion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because you don't want like a tiny little moth here, you know, unless it's completely blurred out and obscured because, you know, it's not, you can't make this totally detailed because it's not going to be in proper proportion to the way that a mum would be. Unless we blurred out the whole mom and then put all of the detail in the background. We kind of right. played with our focus a little bit in that way. It's a dilemma. Hmm. I think I just need to play with some more ideas. It's a cool thing about Procreate, right? Like you can just kind of um, do another layer and mess around with it. You don't have to start all right. over again. <laughs> yeah, you could do like a quick rough, you know, sketch just to see if, you know, what you're thinking is actually going to work. And and then like less than a minute, you, you already have the answer to that. Such a great tool. Yeah, I, I always keep thinking back to um, something that was brought up a little bit ago. And I forget who brought it up. Maybe it was Gabe. But, um, you know, as, as you start to move forward with your art after so many, after so much of a period of time, you end up getting into this issue of the problems that you start to face are far more complex and it takes far more effort to go through and troubleshoot that and advance to the next level, right? And, and that's something that I'm re- I've really been trying to, to work on a lot more is just composition and just trying to maximize my composition. For a while, I started to realize that I was trying to pack so much stuff into everywhere that I wasn't giving it enough negative space. And, um, you know, especially with flowers, I was just trying to cram 12 million different petals in there when it didn't need it. And it could get away with five instead of, you know, 12,000. So it's something I've been trying to do is cut back on the number of elements and objects and just maximize their detail. Totally. Sometimes less is more for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with a chrysanthemum. So I'm really trying to debate, okay, if I do... Uh, if I do the chrysanthemum in this one, what do I do in the other one? Maybe like a peony flower. That could be cool. That would be a good matching flower. You could always do a series. With like yeah, but I only have two frames. Color colors. Oh yeah, well that's definitely not a series then. Yeah, and that's. So, and that's something that I've realized I also do is I'll go out and I'll find these like super awesome, like unique frames, right? And it's going to force me to do a painting to fill the frame so that I can hang it up because I really want to show off the frame and the painting just becomes secondary. You know, but I, I, I always love to paint with found frames and just kind of go with with what I can find and what's available. Um, I always yeah, yeah. find that that just really drives me because some of them have tiny little color accents here and there that you can really use to play off of. Um, and those are always a lot of fun. Right. It can be a lot of inspiration for like what it is that you end up painting in it too. Absolutely. It can like bring the life to like your the, the whole idea, the whole concept approach rather than shopping around and trying to find like the right type of molding and then the right type of color accent and right it it can really really just be a challenge in that aspect 
I like that, man. Plus, it gives you a chance to kind of go out there and look around at some of like, you know, the, the secondhand kind of stores and stuff like that. Because you can find a lot of fun stuff there, even if it's just a cheap little frame. You know what I mean? It doesn't doesn't right. mean it has to be like solid gold or solid wood or anything. Like It can be just a cheap little plastic frame. even. You know, like it's fun. It's kind of like an adventure in that, you know? Right. There's a place here in town. It's called the uh, Bronze Giraffe, I think is what they call it. But uh, it's really cool. When you come and visit, we'll have to, I'll have to take you out there. A lot of fun know, stuff man. there. Yeah, I can't wait for that visit, too. Yeah, I'll be coming out to you soon. It's going to be fun. I'll be coming out to you soon, too. All the trips are coming up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then I got to find one of that one client I was telling you guys about. I have to kidnap him soon. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'll probably need to stock up on chloroform. (laughs) (laughs) I was. uh, It's cool. It's cool. He's just asleep. He's asleep. It's fine. Okay. You can get started. Go ahead. He approves. He said he'll approve anything that we do. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. He said he's a very open individual and he's down for whatever. So yeah. chloroform. You sure? you sure he's all right, Jason? Yeah, yeah, he's all right. Oh, yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Trust me. He signed off that's on this. I have a waiver. That's just his cologne. <laughs> yeah. It smells chloroformy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that ode to chloroform? Yeah, exactly. Man, the sun is finally starting to come out here, dude. It's been gray and wet all day, dude. It's been terrible. Terrible. Same here, man. I got people I know texting me. They're like, this is lame. I want to go out and do something. I want to go do things. How about you, Bruno? You got it, like, sunny all all, all the time down there, huh? Yeah, man. That's why I'm just staying quiet, man. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, you stay quiet, Bruno. Yeah, you know, want to rub it in. We have it too good here, man. What can that I tell looks you? looks so good, dude. Look at that. Yeah, dude. Thanks, man. Man. Let me spot I mean, Bruno. I don't even know if I want to do mine now. I don't even know if I want to finish mine. <laughs> I'm just going to put a sign on mine that says, look <laughs> to Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at your use of focus in there, your use of detail and priority. I mean, you can yeah. barely tell that there's cactus in the background because they're so obscured. Dude, that's amazing. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I tried to, you know, like sometimes we we have that tendency that we want to put like detail in everything, you know, want to make those cactuses look tight. But I just kind of, yeah, just made sure that as it gradually gets further away, you just kind of get to see less and less of of the tone itself even. Like, kind of started muting the colors more and more. And uh, yeah, and I, I tried putting a little detail, you know, just to see, but it, it, it kept on bringing them like too close. Closer to you, yeah. Too mm-hmm. close, yeah. And, and it took away from the impact of this guy just kind of, you know, breaking through, popping out of there. So I yeah, think I really I'm, like. Go I'm ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was done. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say the way this, the way that oval works with the angle of his like his left leg too, man. It's uh, it it really makes it look like he's got some depth, really like emerging from the background and stuff too. You know, it's um, it's pretty incredible. It makes that oval even though when you look at the oval itself it looks flat but when you see that portion of it on top of it it's and then for that cash shadow dude it's just like it's, it looks like it's angled you know like it's a mm-hmm. like a skewed oval kind of but it's not it kind of has that uh awesome. illu- that, thanks man that illusion of like you know like the the, the oval is kind of like uh you know very 2d or whatever and so it kind of yes. ends up contrasting you know with the Yes, yeah, exactly. With the, the realistic, I guess, approach. Of it the, makes you look like you're uh, looking through a window. Yeah, right. Yeah. There you go. And, uh, yeah, man. Thanks, Taylor. man. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. The the foot. This foot. I think I'm gonna like once I'm I'm done with like the detail, and and like tightening it up. 
I'm going to like save it and then bring it back and liquefy the hand because this hand is a little bit too big. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to liquefy it like once I'm done. And that way, because since I have like multiple layers going on, I can't quite like, you know, liquefy that whole area. I haven't figured mm-hmm. out like a system of using my layers effectively so that I can, for example, liquefy the, that, that foot right now. But I'm still a little messy with my, with my layers. Mm-hmm. But, but it's kind of how I keep it safe, you know? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, be a little bit more efficient with the, using the layers, you know, not using a thousand layers. Yeah. Yeah, I always end up duplicating and then just kind of messing, like merging a bunch of layers down to one and duplicate another image, like as is, you know what I mean? And then I'll right. smudge smudge and liquefy all over the whole place. But it takes a lot more time that way too, you know? Um, I think the way you, you have it is working so far. Yeah, it's it's worth the, the trouble for sure, you know, like, and like what you were saying earlier, you know, like that's one of the beauties of procreate right of digital using these digital uh, programs that you can just always go back you could try something out real quick duplicate the layer mess with it with liquify see what happens up oh, doesn't work all right you know let me just go back to the to the way i had it and you go back to that layer that you that you made a copy of just in case yes sir and you erase it if you don't need it right i'm not gonna use that anymore Hmm. You're out of here. Get out of here. Well, guys, I think I'm gonna go ahead and head out. This dude's supposed to be showing up pretty soon. And uh, go for it, homie. It's been great hanging out with y'all. I'm glad I got to you, if, even though I didn't think I was going to. But um, yeah, we'll talk man. again soon. Sounds good, man. You be safe and have a great day. Are right, you too? Peace. Later, Jason. Later, Later. Bruno. Later, Thank man. You. Talk to you later. It's looking great. All right. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, I actually don't know how much longer I'm going to be hanging on as well, just because I do have quite a few things to get done today. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of, you know, data aggregation and, you know, figuring out number stuff because I don't like numbers. There's too many of them. Mm-hmm. Unless I'm counting money. In that case, I like a lot of numbers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. definitely. Me too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like it's, you know, numbers are not so bad. You know, all that stuff that we have to do is not so bad, but it's just that we just rather be drawn, you know? Right. Very much that's so. The, that's the thing. You know, but it's maintaining that balance between, you know, yeah. doing what we have to do mm-hmm. and doing what we want to do. I think that's what they call adulting. <laughs> exactly. I think so. Yeah, I'm not very good at that, but I hear that's, you know, kind of important. But I try. I I try. I try quite a bit. I'm not always successful, but as um, I was listening to a speaker the other day and they were saying that, um, you know, failure is an important thing. Because if we don't fail, then we never really learn. Mm -hmm. And if we don't learn, we can't ever advance. And if we can't advance, then what's the point in doing whatever it is that we're doing? Yeah, fear of failure, you know, always kind of, I mean, at least me, you know, it's kept kept me for a really long time from kind of going for certain things. There's that fear of failing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like once I had like an experience where I was, afraid to fail and I failed anyway you know like it kind of freed me from that fear because I was like oh well you know like nothing happens when you fail you know you just come out like better on the other side you know and you learn and if like you said exactly like you said and if you don't take that that chance and you don't fail most likely you're not going to learn and that means just going around in circles so taking those risks for sure um, have their benefits big time benefits couldn't agree more uh well let's see 
I don't think Gabe is with us anymore, and I'm pretty sure Lauren ducked out. Cool. Well, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us how people can get a hold of you if um, they want to get a hold of you to get tattooed? Sure. Um, you can, uh, well, my name is Bruno Salvatierra, and uh, you can reach me on Instagram or on the app, actually, on the Reinventing the Tattoo app. You can write me there. Uh, you can write me on Instagram, shoot me a DM. My Instagram is at Christmas underscore art, P-R-I-S-M-A-S underscore art. And uh, yeah, just uh, write me there and uh, anytime. I'll be happy to help. Thanks for having me, uh, Jason. It's a lot of fun. Oh, you're very, very welcome, man. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jason Leeser. Uh, if anyone is interested in getting a hold of me, or uh, you know, asking any questions or anything like that, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at Philly Inc. Uh, or you can reach out to me on the Reinventing the Tattoo community. Uh, my name is just Jason there. Um, yeah, always uh, looking for new ideas and new topics. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. Um, and if anyone is ever interested in getting a subscription to the Reinventing the Tattoo Canon, please reach out to me and let me know. Um, I have a 10% off uh, coupon code for you. That's uh, reinventingthetattoo.com slash next level. Um, if you're really looking to take your, your tattoos and your artwork to the next level, it's what you're going to want to do. It's where you're going to want to go. You know, you're learning from some of the best people in the industry getting to sit down and talk to them, you know, if not one-on-one -on -one in a very small group, getting to pick their brain and ask them questions about how they do what they do and, you know, taking yourself to that next level. Uh, once again, thank you to uh, our sponsors for today, which is Inkjet Stencils. Um, definitely got to check them out. Uh, putting photographs on your skin as a stencil can be a serious game changer. Uh, loose screw tattoo. Thank you very much. Uh, awesome artwork from those guys. Definitely go by and check them out. I do believe that they're currently hiring. So feel free to uh, shoot them a message and who knows, maybe it'll be your next job. Um, and raw pigments. Thank you very much. Uh, we were speaking with Lauren earlier. Uh, some of the brightest, smoothest pigments I think I've ever tried. Definitely worth a shot if you're looking for something to really pick your game up as far as uh, your color goes. So other than that, thank you very much, uh, Guy and Gabe, for allowing me to host again. And um, yeah, look forward to seeing you guys next Sunday. So thank you very much for joining us. Take care and um, see you next week. Have a good one. You too. Cheers. Cheers.